In this lecture we will discuss briefly the autonomic receptors in the body, and we will go deeper in the next lectures, so subscribe and follow my social networks to easily get the newest videos. Autonomic receptors are divided into two main categories, the cholinergic receptors, that are activated by acetylcholine, and adrenergic receptors, that are activated by adrenaline and noradrenaline. Cholinergic receptors are divided to nicotinic and muscarinic receptors. Let's illustrate this and make it more simple. From the previous lectures we already know these divisions. Now let's discuss the receptors and neurotransmitters locations. Nicotinic receptors are further subdivided to nicotinic neuronal, or NN receptors, that are located in the autonomic ganglia and adrenal medulla. And nicotinic muscular, or NM receptors, that are located in the neuromuscular junction at the skeletal muscles. Muscarinic receptors are located at the synapse of all the parasympathetic neurons and the effector organ. Adrenergic receptors are located at the synapse of all the sympathetic neurons and the effector organ. And there is an exception, muscarinic receptors are located in one place at the sympathetic neurons, the synapse of the sweat glands. So, now we know that acetylcholine exists at all ganglia, somatic nerve endings, parasympathetic nerve endings, sympathetic nerve endings innervating sweat glands. And noradrenaline exists at the nerve ending of sympathetic neurons, and is excreted along with adrenaline from the adrenal medulla direct to the blood. Let's briefly discuss where they are located in the body and their actions. Muscarinic receptors are subdivided to multiple receptors, but only M1, 2 and 3 receptors have been functionally characterized. M1 is located in the parietal cells in the stomach, when activated it increases the production of HCL. M2 is located in the heart, when activated it decreases the heart rate, known as bradycardia or negative chronotropic effect and decreases the force of contraction, known as negative inotropic effect. M3 is located in lungs, responsible for bronchoconstriction and increases mucus secretion. And NGIT smooth muscles, increases the tone and motility. And in detrezor muscle in the urinary bladder, responsible for the contraction of detrezor muscle causing urine evacuation. And in the eye, it is located in circular muscles responsible for contraction causing meiosis, and in ciliary muscles, responsible for lens accommodation to near vision. And also M3 receptors in the eye are responsible for the reduction of intraocular pressure. M3 are also located in exocrine glands such as salivary, gastric, lacrimal and sweat glands, and they are responsible for increasing their secretions. Stimulation of M3 receptors in endothelial cells of blood vessels causes the release of nitric oxide or EDRF, endothelial-derived relaxing factor, and that activates guanylcyclase, releasing CGMP and finally causing vasodilatation. Adrenergic receptors are divided according to their type to alpha and beta receptors, and according to their position to presynaptic and postsynaptic receptors. The presynaptic receptors are Alpha 2, that when activated inhibits the release of noradrenaline. And beta, that when activated stimulates the release of noradrenaline. The postsynaptic receptors are, alpha 1, beta 1, 2 and 3. Alpha 1 is located in the sphincter muscles of the stomach, causing contraction. And in the sphincter muscles of the urinary bladder, causing contraction and urine retention. And in the blood vessels, causing contraction increasing the blood pressure. And also in the eye, located in radial muscles, responsible for contraction causing midriasis. Beta-1 is located in the heart, when activated it increases the heart rate, known as tachycardia or positive chronotropic effect, and increases the force of contraction, known as positive inotropic effect. And in juxtaglomerular apparatus in the kidneys, releases renin and increasing blood pressure. Beta-2 is located in lungs, responsible for bronchodilatation. And in skeletal muscle blood vessels, causing vasodilatation. And in liver, causes glycogenolysis, so increases glucose in blood. And in GIT smooth muscles, decreases tone and motility. Beta-3 receptors are involved in lipolysis and also have effects on the detrezor muscle of the bladder. So, 
As we discussed before, there is a balance between the actions of the sympathetic and parasympathetic systems. That's all for this lecture. Help me to know if that video was useful for you through using like or a comment.